I am really, really excited for today's video. I'm even a bit nervous, actually, to be honest, simply because I am going to make a remake or show you at least a remake of a track of one of my favorite artists. And I'm sure there are like uh, really other people who actually likes him as much as I do, simply because he kind of really shaped the melodic techno and carved his name and his style in the genre. And that, that is the reason basically I'm kind of stressed because I know that, like me, there are other people who really enjoy Botsin's track and I don't want to make a remake that really doesn't sound like Botsin. So I took a little bit of time and consideration to make this remake at least sound cohesive. Of course, it's all impossible to make the track sounding as good as Godzin himself, but at least I tried, which is still probably like a 30% off from what he has, but I think we can honestly accept that you will never be as good as him, so that is the takeaway, right? By the way, I think I want to mention that we have this remix contest still going on. We have like four weeks left, so you should be starting now if you want to be like uh, doing it in time. So if you start it now, you still have a nice time. So you don't need to be stressed. We have a lot of goodies. We are giving a lot of things. Plus Production Music Live also like supporting the whole thing. And they are giving the courses and samples as well. So for the winner, there are a lot of thousands of euros worth samples, classes and synths and VSTs and so on and so on. I think that's a really, really nice opportunity. I will join it if I were you. But before we start with the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you get notifications when we make any video, any video like this. I don't like saying this, but apparently, according to the statistics, statistics, if you say it, more people subscribe to your channel. So that is that. So sorry for that. But Let's sit down and take a look at a track from the god himself. I'm assuming that a lot of people actually searching for this track for the remake or the story. So I'm going to make a short preview of the track. I'm just going to play like here somewhere so that you can actually hear how it sounds like. So let me play it. <laughs> Uh, so that's how it sounds. I hope it's close enough. I hope you like it. Um, so I'm going to go through the different elements as usual as I tended to in this uh, channel. And I will probably spend more time in the lead sound itself because uh, it has a lot of things going on, believe me. And that is probably the part that you are here as well. So let's go, go quickly what we have here. Basically, I have this kick. Uh, if you are new to my channel, you probably wouldn't know, but I really layer up my kicks with the low end or the sub and mid and the high so that I can get the sound that I'm looking for. In this case, we have this sound. It's honestly kind of a quite simple kick uh, sample. You have this big mid or sub and kind of a okay mid and a slight transit on top of that. I use a slight EQ and drum bus to make it a bit like a puncher. Not, not a big deal. This is kind of, a, I will say, almost an 8 or 8 sample, but a bit layer on top of that. You will find this kind of sample most of the samplers or like modern drum machines. And I think he uses one of those drum machines most of the time. He doesn't do too much stuff with his kick and uh, even like a high end samples and so on. Uh, and then we have this bass sound. Quite simple but it just fills it up. And the best way to demonstrate that is actually playing with the uh, kick itself. I almost feel like this is like a bolting groove, like you miss, uh, you jump over one kick and the second kick you have the boom. Like nothing here and the second part you have the ding. Okay, what is that sound? This one is quite simple, honestly. So basically what I did, if I open up the Diva, uh, if you are new to the channel, we are in our Diva month. So I'm using Diva as much as I can so that we can uh, actually help people understand how the synth cells work. And then we create also preset back 
during the month or couple, after a couple of months with the medias and samples so that you can actually utilize that one as well. Uh, basically, you see that we have simple oscillator, which is kind of in between the uh, triangle wave and the uh, salted wave. The reason being is that we would like to have this kind of a slightly richer um, sub bass, but you don't need to have all this harmonics. So in between there, it makes sense. A slight envelope here, right? And then a cutoff is now almost all the way down. And then we drop the sustain all the way down so that we have this kind of more dry sound. And a slight compressor to get this dynamic range like uh, a bit like a tighter, meaning that if you don't use a compressor, dynamic range could be like a higher, like going the highest, the loudest point of your bass will be higher than using compressor because compressor tends to like a drop it down when you uh, cross a threshold level, right? So we are like squeezing it a bit down to get a bit tighter sound. Side chain to kick. Even though we cut it down, a slight tail goes through here. So side chain just makes it sure that when we hit the kick, there is only kick there. And then EQ8 to cut super highs. You can basically ignore this one. The one thing that I would also suggest you to take a look together with the bass is this guy over here. I actually resampled this one from the mid part of the kick, basically giving this kind of initial hit to the bass sound. So you should be listening to this one together to bass. So it will make the bass a bit pop out to, from the... You can hear that like a transient on the bass itself. It almost feels like a kick. So without this, with this, I hope you can hear it. And then we have this uh, driving bass sound. Uh, most of the time it's like on the background of the track. It's a bit like a wider mystery field as well. And it sounds like this. So what is that? That is also a diva. This time we are utilizing two pet or Two oscillators, the oscillator 2 and oscillator 3. We are utilizing two sine waves. Again, I don't want to make things complicated simply because the in the original track it was also quite simple. You want this kind of a couple of harmonics there on the low end, like you can here see in the equalizer here. Just occupy the space here simply because we don't have much going on there. So this one is on the background all the, all the time, like ding 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 ding, continuously like going through. So if you utilize, for example, a soul tooth wave, then it will be out of harmonics there and it will take a little space and it will like uh, grab my attention or the listener's attention and it will take, like it will occupy too much space in the basically the, um, the frequency range and then there is less space for other instruments, for example, your lead sounds, which is really important for this track. So hence the reason. And we have, of course, uh, an uh, envelope on the cutoff and then no sustain, no release. So we have this kind of tight, Simply, the chorus is important to give this kind of ambience feeling. So take a look. Without chorus, it will be super in the middle. Although I have some other elements here, but it goes right in the, like in your face. With the chorus, it spreads a little bit more. EQ to focus on like a bit this area, and then a clean amp to make it kind of almost like a bass. Um, bass guitar sound and another EQ it was a bit too resonant here so I'm cutting that off this was like additional one I felt like it was overkill but I kept it in case you feel like you need it auto pan like panning it around echo I kept it again if you want to make it even more like a wider but I don't like it or it was not the case in the original track anyone delay here I can actually delete this off and a slight compressor, the same reason that we discussed earlier. And a slight reverb. And altogether, let me play you the low end. So it sounds like this. It sounds quite Bosnish, honestly. He uses this uh, type of low end, simple, groovy and dark low end, because he often has this kind of a moog lead on top of that. So that if you like uh, maintain the low and simple and clean and tight, and then you can actually use your lead sound, bass lead sound on top of that, whatever you re the way you want it. So it's kind of working out the lead sound, if that makes sense. 
simple clean low end and then the main lead and at first look it will look scary especially if you are a new beginner simply because you have no idea what's going on all these automations all the way down and the sound itself is also a bit complicated and it includes also the elements of uh, FM synthesis honestly I think he used it I think he used MOOC 37 and then there's the FM synthesis in MOOC 37 and I think he did the sound like this this is my own take and I think it's close enough but there could be parts that actually he used differently like I mentioned it's almost impossible to 100% like a nail the sound I think the one simple thing with his sound actually I think he used overdrive pedal I actually don't know which pedal he uses I really want to know I can hear the drive pedal I don't know what it is but there is also that difference but I think it's close enough really so if I show you the notes oops I think most of people will be interested in the MIDI first so we are basically switching between D and A sharp like we are using this um, two notes chord progression and if you don't know the importance of this you should be thinking about okay what scale is this we are in the D minor D minor this one the bass uh, note the root and then if you start counting the minor scale so you should be like counting one second third fourth fifth sixth the sixth is important is kind important simply because the sixth note in the minor scale is kind of a signature sound of melodic techno so i will suggest you if you want to make a track sounding more melting techno just try using the sixth note in the minor scale and then you immediately will feel that the track sounds much more like a melodic techno than a regular techno i guarantee you that so the boson utilizes the same idea here so it goes like the, the root and the sixth and switch switches between all the time to give this kind of a really melodic techno vibe or uh, like a this kind of tension like a kind of sad and a melancholic vibe and of course the this is kind of i think his signature thing like uh, playing with the fast notes when he switches between the two long notes so if i play this to just to give you an idea let's play somewhere around here so the part that you will be seeing here the, those the fast notes i will say most of the time you will still like to stay let's say the first note fifth and the sixth but for this track he actually kind of switches a little bit so it's a bit more free part of the sound but the root note is more important thing over here i would say and if you go back and take a look at the patch itself uh, important thing number one we are utilizing all those layers like all three of them however the most important thing is here is like you see that the, this D2 knob is like moved around with the like weird points and it wouldn't make sense if you don't know why they are simply because this knob over here means that you use the oscillator one for FM synthesi synthesizing for the oscillator two and three. So what does that even mean? So it means that oscillator one, the signal itself, goes to the oscillator two and three and it modulates these two oscillators and because of that the tune of the oscillator 2 and 3 is actually not the tune that you start with so if you are it is starting D sharp for example or simple D in the beginning the oscillator 2 when you start FM synthesizing synthesizing because of the different with difference between the wave shape it will start sounding like something else than D and then that means that you should be tuning your two oscillators after you start FM synthesizing your sound. There's a solution. If you sync it here, then you wouldn't need it. But then you don't have this kind of, uh, I will say, non perfections in the sound, which makes the sound itself. So I did it manually by listening to them. So I try to like a, tune it myself, which also gives this kind of richer sound, uh, I would say. And the second or our third I start stop calling thing important thing is actually most of the time if you took like a look at the tutorials or in like earlier Boson tracks actually you will hear that he oftentimes uh, automates the cutoff so it he opens up the cutoff if you see him li playing live you will see that he's like holding that big cutoff knob in the MOOC 
uh, sub 37 or the sub second 37 i think he has an e1 now and he is playing with that a lot but for the specifically for this type of track or for this track i think he plays a lot with the envelope uh, itself than the cutoff what does that even mean it means that the aggressiveness of envelope is actually changed when he plays with the envelope amount i think what he did does still in the li live concert what i see at least from the videos actually he already used ableton to play live so he actually has actually that automation on his midi clip for the envelope he still only uses with the cutoff simply because it's easier to do that in the live concert rather than track like play with the envelope because they are really sharp ups and downs and he just like use the cutoff kind of a just a simple uh, automation and opening it up even more I guess and so on but the original track itself I think he automated that a lot and uh, I will show you in a moment why it is important it just makes that kind of a glass sound in a synthesizer the other thing that is important here probably giving the chorus note to give this kind of a formal sound slight chorus you see that the weight is not that high and of course the LFO on the cutoff so that you have this boss in LFO like dun 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 if I play the sustain note somewhere here while we open up the cutoff like listen to here so this is basically LFO uh, you see here right just putting up and down up and down up and down and so on giving sound very bold and stuff basically okay let's take a look what what all this automation does the f the first thing the i know the usual suspect is the frequency basically we are like uh, opening up when we are playing this fast note so that we can hear them a better like what does that mean if i play here barely hearing and we open that up i'm down again going up and just like that however the important thing over like i mentioned you should see that the frequency modulation depth basically modulating the envelope aggressiveness in this case you see that i'm doing a lot of stuff with the fast notes to give this kind of glassy sound and you wouldn't get it without i would assume that you would have hard time to get this sound without automating that and it's basically making that let me clean this up and you will see the difference you see what happens if I take it back and take a look at that. Because of that sharp envelope in the beginning, you definitely hear like a plug, like whoop sound, and then you drop it down back again. The sound gets less aggressive again, and then up and down and up and down. I know it takes a lot of time, and it's a lot of like a manual work, basically manual label. But yeah, that's the thing. You want to have a good track, you have to spend time on it. Kind of. Not always true, though. And anyway, and then you will also see that I'm changing the shape. What does that even mean? If I go to Diva, like, like we are looking at the shape 2, which is basically this button over here. It basically means that when we go to the bass, like long notes, we go back to uh, soft tooth to get this like aggressive bass sound. But when we are approaching that fast notes, we are changing shape to the square wave to get this glassy note kind of mostly so you see here take a look at here back but look at this way over here the oscillator tree we are also kind of adding that up like in between you will see that in the track original track the, the those fast notes actually they change the timber quite a lot during the track itself so again it could be just simply because maybe boss in like a kind of took a different takes so once he plays with the square wave and the soft wood and then he just blended it in the after production or the post production that's possible but if you are playing live you want to get that sound i will say you have to do this trick like adding in those later turtles later bring in the turtle slater when you are doing these fast notes and it's another type of oscillator adding that timber changing the sound more aggressive or less aggressive and so on which is what i'm doing here basically giving this turtle slater time to time and in here 
I'm having a channel EQ opening up the high end, so to give this kind of a break feeling. If I play here, you will hear that. It is quite aggressive. You hear how dirty it sounds. And the, probably one last thing is the tune of the third oscillator and tune of the second oscillator. I think I should have it here. Maybe I haven't added. Let me edit the tune here. It should be also here. Let's put it down here. So tune two, basically, we are detuning the second oscillator to give this kind of more chaotic effect. I know right the moment you should be like, oh man, this is too much. I know. But the guts in himself, the guy is genius, so he does it. So let's see here. Take a look at the background that Oscillator 2 is detuned and comes back to the life. Listen to it closely. And that. Um, the most of the things, again, just listening to what he does and what he automates, it could be really hard in the beginning to understand all these automations. And I think that's the reason that you should take a look closely on each automation and what he what it does in this project file to understand actually what an automation can bring to your project. I think that's the biggest take from this track to understand the added value of automation for making your sound more feeling more like a feeling like a variation has a more variation than it is if you take a look at the track itself actually if i turn this on you will see that there's not really that much of effects going on there's not much of variation going on the most of the variation end up being the playing with the uh, automation itself and that was mainly, that was the most important part, honestly. And here we have this super lovely uh, arpeggio, typical Wilson as well. I would like to use Diva for this one, but I couldn't simply because I had to use sample and hence pigments. Uh, if you don't know, pigments has a new version that I loved and I think this is the synth of 2019, more or less, uh, simply because the capabilities the synth itself has. What I'm doing here, simply put, this is kind of a triangle wave, simple triangle wave, right, uh, here. And then I have another triangle wave on top of that. They are like a, a tuned differently, this is 12 semitones, so it's like one octave above the, this guy. If I solo this one, you will hear it much better. However, this sound, if we turn this up, is not good enough. I was thinking like, what, like the, I, I heard it when I heard the arpeggio. I was like, yeah, this is a triangle or sine wave in between there. It's good, but the layer on top of that, there is something that. Honestly, I was really trying to understand and then I come up with, yeah, it was this. And that was a piano sample. And he just took this <laughs> high part of the piano and layer that up on the analog together it just gave this kind of a high end on top of that you can mix it a bit properly a bit better probably it's more like this i guess maybe like this probably something like this right uh, and i think he distorts this slightly as well so it, it's slightly different, ever slightly different, simply because also it depends on which white noise he uses and so on. And he had this kind of a less aggressive um, filter than the Moog itself, so which I'm using the Sam filter. Again, why the synth is so powerful, you can like a blend out of different filters on top of each other. And I have, of course, simple uh, envelope on the cutoff, fast movement. And on effects side, I'm using a bit overdrive, compressor. A really long reverb. It's almost like a um, pad sound in that sense. It just gives this kind of blush background sound, um, and it's quite of kind of important. 
to create that ambience because there's no pad in this track and and the pad sounds actually comes from the arpeggios reverb sound here i have these two layers like a white noise-ish but a little bit on the high end low end and this more white noise this comes from analog and this comes from the sample together uh, i have fa filter pro fa filter pro r for the reverb to give this kind of really clean big ambient sound i also provide a reverb here from the ableton it is fine but if you want to aim for like super clean reverb this works just better simply because the algorithm i guess they use is different more or less right and then uh, there is not really too much going on here aside to the kick and slide compressor and another eq to cut super lows and together good and nice and then we have this clap simple really not that important the most important thing probably if you don't know how to layer your claps this clap is like low and this clap is like a bit same clap but tuned up three and i just i'm just taking this tail to give it a bit richer sound right and then i have this echo to have this house effect which means basically making the sound stereo simply because delaying we are delaying the right signal on your head like 40 milliseconds after the left signal so it feels like it's a uh, much wider than it is so without it like thrown in your face sides and another echo make it even wider and a little bit overdrive a little bit eq a little bit reverb a bit compression and so on classic stuff not that really fancy most of the time Bolson has this kind of simple claps simple i wouldn't say simple claps although he has some weird clap going on in some of the tracks but simple kick kind of simpler sound design for the claps most of the time 808 clap or like 707 claps and so on i think this one was 707 uh, and then you have the hi-hats and here i want to make a comment simply because i think the hi-hats is the most overlooked element of techno and deep house simply because we just throw a 16 hat and an 808 hat and a little bit shaker and we call it a day most of the time and Bosin doesn't and he has billions of different white noises going on all around and it just gives this kind of uh, nice ambience to the track right and what i mean by that if i just solo the hats look at this yeah there is no really simple 808 sound over there basically we have this 16 hat going right and left and then we have the shaker with really weird kind of a um, tempo and then this analog ableton's analog going like bop, bop, bop. and then we have another analog doing this weird stuff basically i'm using some resonance some delays and so on and then another analog doing some shaker stuff uh, so basically the reason that i'm using analog all the time is just i want to make this um, white noise and i don't want to go through the samples i just throw in the analog and put into noise mode and just shape it right from there there's not needed more but in the end it's just basically i think he just uses lfo to make most of the movement but i wanted to make the exactly same uh, so i didn't throw a random lfo i build the tempo basically just listen to it but most of the time you can actually throw a level and do it that way and that's it i guess um again you will see that there's not too much effects actually there was an effects uh, kind of waterish effect in the track i wanted to do it but then i realized like it doesn't worth it because yeah i mean it will take too much time probably and it's really not you don't even hear it if you don't really pay attention but anyway, so let's start to finish. This is a long track. It's like almost five minutes. So what I'm going to do, I take it from here. So we take a listen to in a, around a minute or two. I'm going to get a strike from YouTube for this anyway. So let's go it. Go for it.
I think I will just sit here and listen to this track like a whole day, no problem at all. It's just a beautiful track. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this track. I hope you enjoyed the remake and I hope you learned something. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>